So when you say, well, what do, how do we know if we have effective security governance? What are we looking to see that'll tell us? Well, we should be able to answer yes to are we seeing these six elements? Strategy alignment. You know, again, when we talk about strategy alignment, oops, sorry, got a little click happy there. Uh, alignment with strategy is the IT strategy in alignment with the business strategy. Or are we constantly bickering back and forth? We don't have the resources we need, says the security team, or we can't do the things we need to do because we're so locked down, says the business. And are we finding a way? And, and to a degree, that will always be a back and forth, right? Security is always going to want security. Business is always going to want ease of use. But are we working together? Do we understand the role each side plays in reaching the common objectives? Are we in alignment? Okay. I've already talked about risk management. That's going to continue. But risk management needs to be a part of every decision that we make. What are we protecting and what's it worth? What are our threats and vulnerabilities? What's the probability and impact of the risk? What are the controls we can put in place? And what are their values or what are their costs? What's a cost-effective solution? Right. In a nutshell, that's risk management. Okay. That needs to be a part of all decisions. Value delivery. Are we delivering value to our stakeholders? Are we seeing an increase in our stocks or our stocks plummeting because we were on the news for the last month with a, a security compromise? Are we meeting our business objectives? Um, value comes in so many ways other than just dollars right are we an organization that's well known are we a leader in the market are we um, spending our money well are we focusing our priorities well are we getting a return on investment again not always dollars but are we getting a return what we spend are we seeing the benefits of value delivery resource management do we have our resources devoted to the proper areas at the proper times? Do we support those functions that are most important to the health and well-being of the organization? Do we have access to critical resources when we need those resources? Right. Um, performance measurement. Let me tell you, don't underestimate the importance of performance measurements on this exam. Okay. Um, and in the world, you know, if you're going to implement a control, whatever you're going to spend money on, you always want to know that that was a good purchase or a bad one, right? I'm going to go out and drop $60,000 on an ASA firewall from Cisco. I want to know if it was a good spend or bad, right? Do I want my money back? Is this something I'm going to continue to invest in? Well, the, you know, the idea is I don't know if it's a good investment or a bad investment. I have to have expectations, and I have to have a way of measuring those expectations. Is it effective? Well, what does effective mean, right? Just definitions of what success is for a certain control and, and the criteria that we examine, all of that means that we don't just spend money, right, implementing solutions, throwing things up against the wall to see what sticks. We purchase a security control based on risk assessment, we implement the security control, we have expectations, it's objectives, and we measure to determine is that device, is that control meeting its objectives? Are we seeing, you know, the 10% reduction in internal threat or uh, internal um, or of um, external threat? You know, are we seeing that reduced of what's getting through from the outside inside? By what percent? Over what time frame, right? measurement having our hands on things not just setting something in place and walking away right continuing to measure and examine are we meeting our expectations and then last but not least integration is security integrated into what we do are we a secure organization inherently or security and afterthought. And you know what? That comes straight down from senior management. What is our company culture in relation to security? Are we secure by default? Is the first thing we think of, how will this impact security as opposed to what's the easiest 
or it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? This comes from effective security governance. And when you walk into an organization, if that effective security governance isn't there, that's a whole lot of shift that has to happen within an organization. It is always so much easier to start out on the right foot than to correct the ship six years in or six months in. So unfortunately, very few of us walk into an organization that's never had an information security officer or a CISO before, right? We're going into an existing organization and we're having to deal with what's in place. So, you know, the answer to these six questions, you know, or do these things exist, probably isn't a firm yes or a firm no. It's a firm uh, sort of, right? Somewhere in between. So what we're going to have to focus on across the next couple of courses is how can we take where we are and how can we bring that around to where we want to be, right? Let's figure out, well, first of all, you got to figure out where you are. What is currently in place? We've got to evaluate the mechanisms, the controls, what the current strategy is. And then we've got to figure out where we want to be. And then ultimately, our job is going to be to close the gap. All right. So um, just the last couple of pieces here about information security governance, and then we're going to wrap it up for the day. But, you know, in addition to those six indicators of effective security governance, there are lots of other even more tangible benefits. Effective security governance is going to ensure we maintain compliance with laws and regulations. We're going to be in compliance so that when the auditors come, we're not all nail biting and crossing our fingers and hoping for the best, right? Because our leadership is going to direct us in the manner that we maintain compliance, not with not just with legal, but also with those ethical standards, okay? That will lessen the amount of litigation, penalties, fines, okay? um, cost savings, because it is cheaper to pay for security up front than on the back end. I teach a lot of project management courses, and for every project management course where we talk about quality, 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 you can teach the exact same thing in this course and just substitute the word security for quality. So one of the things I always tell my project management folks is you will pay for security, for quality somewhere. And if you think about that, wouldn't you agree that any business is going to pay for quality? And they can pay it on the front end with good materials, training their people, good processes, auditing. Or they can pay on the back end with refunds, with loss of reputation, rework, warranties, all that stuff. It's the same thing for security. You can pay for security now, and we can put the right people in place. We can build a security program that's based on industry best practices and standards that takes risk management into account, or we can pay for security through fines, loss of reputation, loss of customers, blah, 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 blah. And you ask, when is it cheapest? Is it cheaper to pay to prevent or to correct? It's always cheaper to pay to prevent. So what I would tell you is one of the big benefits of governance is we're going to be proactive rather than reactive. That will deliver greater value to our stakeholders. It will um, help us use our resources more efficiently and more effectively. Okay. And I've already talked about the importance of performance measurement, making sure that we determine with whatever we implement that we have expectations. We launch a new program, we have expectations for how that program is going to change the environment in which we work. What are those expectations? How do we measure those expectations? When do we measure? What if we do if our measurements are not meeting our goals? How do we address that? That should all be spelled out as part of um, documents from senior management. That's part of governance, is determining how, determining how performance measurements are going to be handled. Okay? Again, a big part of oversight.